get this question a lot. Um, at the time of the mistake, didn't think anything of it um, because I never kind of dwell on mistakes or high moments. You just kind of move on. Um, the reality hit about the situation more than my mistake when we went 2-1 down. That was a really kind of moment of realisation that we could lose this um, and now we need to score two because at 1-1, one, one, we need to score one goal. I, I believe we were going to score one goal at some stage. Do a, did I believe we were going to score two in the last minute? No. <laughs> but uh, yeah, in regards to, to that, and I've said this to, to City fans as well. It's like, well, I would take that moment away as as the, I say the lowest. But in that season, the highest was a 1-0 win at Aston Villa. So let's take that away as well. And we don't win the league. So in regards, in regards to me playing a part in that, yeah, it, was, it wasn't a great moment. But there were so many other positive moments throughout the season. A lot of stuff unexpected or just stuff I wasn't used to. I just you take for granted fixtures and the FA and the support you get in and around the game and that yeah, there's a there's a lot more we could do here, but yeah, I was aware that we wasn't allowed the fixtures um for the season due to um potential match fixing. Referees associations were getting burnt down. Um I remember before the Derby game, we played Olympiacos and the fans come to the hotel that we stay in um, and they're in the, the reception area and then the captain come and knocked on my door and was like, oh, we're going downstairs, the fans are here. And it's like, when I say fans, I don't just mean a couple of them looking for autographs. It's like the ultras with flares in reception. And I was like, and, and I had a routine like before a game. It was just like, do what I needed to do, chill, ice um, and recover. And I was like, oh yeah, now nah, I'll um I'll, I won't leave it. He said, no, I'm not asking. We're going down. Like, so we went down there and it was going off. Like they was singing and chanting and obviously letting us know how important this game was. Um and then equally we lost the game. But we had a few days off, so I was going home. So my car was in a car park, and then we came back and they were waiting. Like all the ultras were there waiting there. But I, as we got after coach, I could go the other way to get to my car and go to the airport. So um, I didn't see the outcome of that. And then, yeah. So that was pretty, uh, well, new experience, should I say. But um, overall, like, players were good. Staff members, uh, majority of them were, were great, the ones that I worked with. So different, very different experience. Yeah, again, they're obviously different and the way Pep wants to play is different to, to say Joe Strumpf's but um, who's to say Joe couldn't have developed that style? Who knows? Um, it was clear that he wasn't the manager's ideal choice because he, before Edison, there was Bravo uh, and Caballero. So there was obviously something else. It wasn't solely down to Joe's ability with his feet, Joe's ability with his feet. Um, that reason why he wasn't the manager's choice um, but like you said Joe Hart exceptional goalkeeper exceptional work ethic and proven that he's he's a winner like he's gone on and I think he just won his second title or maybe third so listen Joe's a great friend of mine but yeah different different styles obviously mean different outcomes for different players I was lucky enough to play with a lot of keepers I could trust because again the requirements were different so I could trust them in what we needed to to be trusted in I, I, I never played with a goalie that I thought like he's not gonna give his all or he's gonna let me down when this happens it was kind of like Tim Howard um Matt Murray um Joe Hart to name a few of the club ones it was kind of like now these guys know my strengths and I know theirs. So how do we play together and understand? So there's not always time to communicate in game, in moments. So we would try to review situations and say, when this happens, 
show him this way or do this and then if he doesn't if it goes in or if i let him pass another way then it's we know who's responsible for that outcome um so that was kind of the beauty of having good goalkeepers and and um, and friendships and partnerships not to the level he's doing in the time he's done it now um did i see him being a manager i, I could say yes very very astute player very intelligent so there's no surprise in how he's he's coaching or managing um but yeah the, the surprising factor is the time he's done it in and the transitions he's had to go from man city to to arsenal and be successful um so fast yeah um that is an element of surprise but how he's doing it is not because he's so he was so clever Yeah, yeah. There's always leaders. It's just whether that leading style fits the dressing room, um, and that that's the key factor. I, I, I think for a leader, I think you have to have the respect of the group for whatever reason that is. Whether it's performances, training, relationships, it just has to be a respect element up there. That when you speak and when you address the group, they listen and you get a response. Um, I don't know the dressing room now, but. Yeah, we, we were lucky with that we had some top talent and a lot of experience and players that had been at the, at the club for a long time, so knew what it was, knew the kind of the culture um, and the behavioural patterns of the club and what the fans want to see. So it was an easier transition, say, for me than some players now. Like I think back to... Alan Stubbs and David Weir, they were embedded in, you mentioned their names, you associate them instantly with Everton. And then we had other players, so that was in the squad that could reference the same things. But I think um, in terms of leaders now, it just works different, so I don't know. Profile of player, small, agile, someone that always constantly be moving um the, one of the toughest ones for that was um Giuseppe Rossi um Rossi so for for United he was at Villarreal at the time and I just remember thinking Jesus the movement is your non-stop but luckily for me some of his teammates wasn't on the same page so they wasn't like like rewarding him with his movement by by passing him the ball so but it made me realise, like, yeah, there's obviously another level and an understanding. But I, I, I liked to play against players that wanted the physical battle um, as much as I did. Funny stories. There's not many funny stories about, I can remember about either, but less more about Dennis. Dennis was very calm and I learned how you approach training games um and just the professionalism of dennis um obviously it was a lot of his career but I'm, i was aware of his status in the game and even more so now um but yeah he was he was really good and i was lucky with, with a lot of players pretty much all of them that i had a good relationship so i would take on board the advice they were giving and lucky enough for me they all wanted to help me um, Inti's approach was different but perfect for me he would tell me as it was when it was and whether that was a kick up the backside or kiss on the cheek you know what I mean it was gonna, he was needed so Inti was someone and he's someone I still speak to and hold in the highest regard for his influence on, on my career like a boyhood hero I was playing midfield due to wanting to be like Paul Lynch but they, they were great for me because, like I said, they kept me grounded in regards to understanding that there was responsibilities I had as part of my, my position in the team, but to enjoy it as well and, and just learn how to, to be a professional and get better. He 
Glenn Huddle, without a doubt, the biggest influence on my career, um, the most enjoyable manager I worked with and the way he viewed the game and spoke to me about the game was unique. It was so clear. Um, was it because I was young and, and still learning? Who knows? But the things he spoke to me and the pictures he painted about the game didn't come after that to the level of what he spoke to me about it. And yeah, um, he's someone I admire as a, as a pundit. I like when I hear him speak, it, it just sounds so clear it's, and it sounds so obvious that you think, why didn't you see that or recognise that? But yeah, Glenn Hoddle was, without the doubt, the, the best manager. But the coach, Terry Connor, was the most influential coach on my career. Someone that kind of manufactured me from the age of 16, 17 to create the habits I had throughout my career and the, yeah, like I said, the biggest influence on my career would, would be Terry Connor. Same as when you think about coaching, there's things and styles that you want to um, obtain and there's, and there's some that you don't like. I never want to be um, a pundit that's criticising. Like, sometimes players do good things and other players can't cope with that. It doesn't have to be a mistake. It can just be good sometimes. So that's the way I can view certain things. Um, I feel having worked in development football as well has helped me understand the difference between recognising when it's a mistake and, and it's something a player does. So there might be an isolated moment that a player makes a mistake, but if you look back and think back to the game and previous games, you're like, well, he doesn't do that. So that was just a one-off. So you can obviously understand that and take that on board where if you're seeing players make consistent decisions based on that, and then you're like, that's what he does. So he's not learning. So I like to think I can have a diplomatic approach or thought process to to that aspect of the, the punditry. Um, but again, it's something that I wanted to experience and I've been spoken to uh, players that have retired and people in the game I, I trust their opinion on. They said to just do a lot of a lot of things, whether it's punditry, coaching, um, whatever it may be, development side of football and see what you enjoy because what you enjoy you tend to, to give more to and yeah, punditry is something I enjoy.